What about now? Because I'm seeing if I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, cool. They can hear you also. Joe, welcome to Jacob V Weekly. It's been so long. Yeah, it's been a long time. I haven't spoken to you since the last time we were on air. Uh, no, I mean, we've talked. You mean in person? I don't know. I just wanted to create the illusion that... We oh, that we've been completely on unplugged? You're right. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know. We hadn't planned that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jacob V Weekly. Uh, that was um, some live jams happening there from, uh, you know, I have two micro Korgs now. The micro Korgs. Yeah. And, uh, and I have a MIDI synced up. I mean, some chicken. What kind of chicken did you get? Is that Chick-fil-A? Mm. Better not be. Mm. No, this is um, some like organic frozen chicken strips or some shit. It's mad decent. It'll suffice. Uh, animated Geek says, I haven't seen you since the war. Um, shout out to Animated Geek 100. I tweet stuff at her, and she just draws it, and it's perfect. She drew me a beautiful eagle that was actually a chicken the other day. I wanted, like, a chicken that could fly majestically like an eagle. And she also drew a silly doodle of Anthony Fauci for me, both of which I appreciate greatly. Uh, Anthony Fauci back in the saddle, as it were... Huh? It's up, exciting. Up there in the old... I mean, if you're Anthony Fauci, it's exciting. Um, a lot of irons in the fire over here. Uh, so, Joe, lots to talk about this week. And, um, and you know, I've, uh, we had a great birthday for, um, episode for me last week with Al and... Um, Zah and Chris and Maida, a lot of my friends came through. Yeah, that was like one of our funnest episodes, I think. I'm a big fan. What's going on? I'm just looking at... It looked like something else was still playing. Music-wise. Because it was. I think we've been talking over music this whole time. Yeah, yeah, the hip hop function. Do they have any new patches on those micro corks that are any good? Are I they like know. new patches? You know, uh, okay. No, this, I mean, this is pre owned. So Maybe he left some secret good patches on there. It was a she, you bastard. You know, I, well, I was wondering, you know, the person, the username that you saw that came up on the Streamlabs. Is that, were you assuming their gender as a woman progressively? No, she's my cousin. No, I know her. Yeah, I know, yeah, I think she's, you know, not to assume that she's so binary or whatever. I want to add, I want to add something to the show prep, that, that article you posted about the hip hop. Oh, we're going to talk about that. Okay, good. <laughs> that was all, I, was, I was like, what is going on? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the world is crazy. So on my turntable this week, actually for the last month by now, has been disc three in my Third Man Records Vault exclusive edition of the White Stripes' new official greatest hits. I was concerned at first because historically a greatest hits could be like a generic compilation of like, you know, recognizable songs by like a lame duck catalog by the, the holding publisher. You know what I mean? Like... Mandy Moore switched record labels, so her old record label put out Mandy Moore Platinum Hits. And even yeah, she was like, what? Like, what is on there? <laughs> it's all like hymn covers, you know, hymnals. Mm -hmm. What? I don't know. That, that's why I assume Mandy Moore would have. No, no, she's got a, yeah, she's got some great stuff, especially late Mandy Moore. Ooh, like Wild Hope Mandy Moore. Some good stuff. It's, it's, but this, um... It's, this White Stripes thing is definitely not that. And disc three is all B-sides, which is always my favorite thing. And the highlight for me are these four B-sides from Conquest. when Con um, That was their big mariachi cover of some old Dusty Springfield song or something. Yeah. And these four songs were recorded at Beck's home studio after their last tour got cut short, I think. Which is, uh, I remember realizing... Um, is like their latest studio recording together. You know what I mean? Before they yeah. disbanded. So I'm remembering all this from being a super fan at the time, not necessarily from recent research, but those four songs are really cool. They're really weird. 
and uh, I like them a lot. All the B-sides are great fun, and I didn't have any of them on vinyl, so the B-sides disc is like the best thing ever. Yeah. Maybe you feel like it's a money grab, but I'm a happy customer, so there's plenty of money in that dead horse. I'm going to keep kicking it. Uh, also, I, I've been listening um, on my Jacob V's favorite songs for January. It's a song called Bonk by Saturn, and there's a lyric that says, F J.K. Rowling, she better quit it, and Joe thought I was actually talking about J.K. Rowling, like we had beef. But she is a turf. She is a transphobe and an old lady. A turf. Is that yeah. the term? Yeah, trans exclusionary radical feminist or something. I love that. Oh, yeah, there it is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, but um, I don't have a dog in that fight specifically. Mm. Which chicken is that? This is some Purdue organic frozen chicken. Oh, that's cool. Mm hmm. Pre breaded. I'm sorry, uh, I, uh, I'm not being very interesting. I was under the impression I was going to be doing my normal thing. What? Just, uh. Yeah, I just had to eat my chicken. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, you're not in charge here. Don't worry about it. I'm going to get some food, too. I've got some noodles Dude, upstairs. Yeah, you're going to have to wait until we're done. Because we've already started. <laughs> and if, I, if I'm just sitting down here talking to myself, Keenan's going to pull the plug. <laughs> She's not going to let um, that go on. Hey, we have a talk about the Instagram. We have an Instagram page now. Yeah, so I put that in my notes, guys. If you um, follow me on Instagram, uh, the show now has its own Instagram where we're going to be posting exclusive content and clips and um, some stuff from the archives, like just old MySpace photos and shit. So um, it's Jacob V Weekly, all, you know, lowercase. You can just type that in, no spaces, and it'll pull right up. Jacob V I Weekly, uh, J A C O B V I W E E K L Y, and not, yeah. and uh, and that's new to us, but that's a uh, a way that we're gonna kind of because constantly doing everything in YouTube. I mean, unless you spend all day in front of YouTube, Instagram is probably more fun for our clips. We're gonna try to do <laughs> we're gonna try to do some fun clips that are short and put them on the Instagram. So we're excited about that. <clears throat> Woo! Rumor mill, honey. So St. Louis music venues already operating at a mere 10% of capacity are allegedly being pressured to avoid booking hip hop events. Did you see this on so Facebook crazy. today? And yeah, so that's what I was. Uh so I I saw like three different dudes posting about either not being able to book hip hop shows in St. Louis or about certain venues telling them that they weren't booking hip hop shows specifically. And so then I posted to kind of gather some of this information, investigating some of this stuff. And allegedly older woman, Marlene Davis of the 19th ward is who supposedly gave local venue red flag and ultimatum to shut their doors or ban hip hop till we get over the COVID restrictions. Now, the reason they're, they allege to be targeting that crowd specifically is because uh, of an incident where uh, a trash can got thrown at the building by sort of a, a drunken, angry mob of sorts. I wasn't there. Um, we'll keep you updated as details unfold. But this is something that I felt the need to call out because it's something that, like, I've always struggled with a certain um, group of venues that seem to have a very specific demographic they they are will play to exclusively and um and if there's any political pressure motivating any of that stuff that's absolutely not okay with me i had even people reaching out to me separately i'd like seriously like two different people reach out to me separately say hey thanks for posting that that sounds crazy i want to find out more about it like uh, I don't even really know anything yet. So um, this is the stuff that's come up from people that were uh, performing I'm at. Trying to do research at There's one of these. Either. Yeah, it's it's a new it's a breaking story. We're breaking it here, folks. Wow. I know, I know. I feel like a journalist. I feel like I'm going to get assassinated. They're going to send the Mossad in here. That's the thing. I would really love if this older woman, Marlene Davis, is connected enough. Um, because if that's true. That could be really good for my career if we had some beef with an older woman, like just that level. I don't want to go to war with the mayor because she <laughs> she will have me killed. But an older person, like I could take some older goons. <laughs> it'd be so funny because it'd be funny because she she has like about the same platform as we do. It'd be funny if that's like her 
she like is wanting to have some beef, so she finds this like totally. Great. I'll have her on the show. Podcast. I will have her she, on the show. She can come on this show anytime. She, I'll kill this cat. This cat is pulling on my headphones right now. Get out of here! <laughs> She's like, oh, this, this website. They're literally. It's like weekly. they're. Oh, Joe, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry. Oh, they did it. Oh, they did it. They, they, oh, they did it. They have unhooked my you. Headphone. Hold up. Oh, and it's dark. Oh God. Oh my God! I can't believe he did this to me. I can't believe he did this. Oh, I found it. I can't believe. This is ridiculous. I have my headphone. In a. Could you hear me? Yeah. I'm back. I had my headphone plugged into an extension cable, and the cat literally ripped it separate so that i couldn't hear anymore oh so um again you know i've had beef with certain neighborhoods of venues with age restrictions uh with a few years ago when they opened like some new place the thing was like dress code being really insensitive and kind of shitty what so if older people are yeah they're they're like when they opened ballpark village it was like all very racially targeted dress code. That is so bro, funny. Bro, they're not even sleeping on it. They were not yeah. even pretending with the dress code. They made it very clear what sort of element they were kind of excluding. And uh, yes. it was offensive as all get out. <laughs> I can't show the I can't show the cat because he ran away because I screamed at him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and That's so, awesome. yeah, Ballpark Village, right when they opened it, was all like no baggy pants and no long yeah. t-shirts and no bandanas of any kind and <laughs> no hats no tennis right. shoes i'm like how am i supposed to dress to come to a bar and grill <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> they're like you know this is gonna be a nice place it's gonna be a nice place this is gonna be a nice you know... place we're not gonna have any spicy food <laughs> yeah, right. we're not gonna have anything in other languages this is gonna be a nice right. place this is gonna be a <laughs> nice it's gonna be nice It'll be two bathrooms folks it's going to be so nice. We're going to have a his and hers bath. We're going to have dress codes. And we're going to do Latin mass at 7 a.m. every day. It's going to be a classy place. It's going to be classy. We're going to have communion for lunch. You get a whole loaf of bread and a bottle of Mad Dog. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the communion of the Cardinal Stadium, St. Louis. So, no, so this is a historical thing. So I got really upset about it. And because it's it, it's just an older woman, I feel like we could go to war with an older woman uh, in the media. That is, that's exactly what our rival. That's the perfect JJB. That's what I need. I need. I need. I yeah. need. So I need my Wikipedia page to start with. Uh, gained notoriety for starting shit with older people. Confrontation. Yeah. Yeah. For a very public <laughs> confrontation with. Older woman Marlene Davis. Listen, I want to be able to go down on Locust, see a little hip hop music, go outside. I want to start a fight and I want to throw a trash can through a window because I'm a patriot. Okay, so. I don't need you telling me what kind of. I, if I want to listen to Tone Loke and beat my wife, that's none of our older woman Marlene Davis's business. Now, that is not really what would happen. What would happen is we would put on Pony by Genuine, and my wife would f f just frag the shit out of me with a sock full of soap. It's more likely. Is this thing on? Yeah, I'm listening. No, you're killing. I'm so sorry. stay, yeah, so stay on that. That's going to be yeah. crazy. Joe, if you find anything about older woman Marlene Davis of the can 19th I, Ward and anything about her biases towards hip hop, I need that data. Can I can I actually read the, the headline of this RFT thing? Is it how recent is it? It's um uh never mind. Cocksucker. <laughs> I knew there's this is a breaking This is a breaking story. <laughs> But what yeah. was happening in 2013 that is related to this? She was even 2013 is too late for the to Davis. It's a no brainer. This is not a style. She's talking about baggy pants. Tells RFT this is an absolutely vulgar display of disrespect, not only to every other human being. Oh uh, man, it sounds like yeah. What she look know. like? That's what I was gonna. I mean, I can I can assume some things. Well, I just want to know who. So, what's her deal? So, she is. 
I'm gonna look it up. Marlene Davis. Okay, so she's an older African American lady. Really? So I probably voted for her. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> what ward am I in? Uh, you're in Ward 19. I'm in Ward 19? Yeah, I don't know what ward you're in. That's what I asked you, jackass. Okay, so... I'm in the 18th ward, I remember from when I vote. So she's not in my ward. So I, did, I didn't vote for her, but if I didn't know who my older person was supposed to be and I saw her on the ticket, I probably would have. Botanical Heights. But uh, she doesn't like... Li- okay, so she is... Now, here, now here's the other thing. Here's, here's specifically the thing that is important to point out, Joe, that maybe Marlene is making me think about a little bit, is that... Um, We should not assume that casual uh, clothing and certain types of music represent the entirety of an entire race of people, right? We would never, we would never assume so much here at Jacob V Weekly. Let me put my phone. However, Keenan's wondering why I'm yelling. (laughs) Because my last episode seemed a little quiet, so I'm being intentional with my volume, honey girl. (laughs) And so I don't want to assume that it's strictly racist against black people to ban hip hop events. There are plenty of African-American people that don't like hip hop. Marlene Davis seems to be one of them. Right. Um, It's also I don't want to assume that something like Marlene Davis said baggy pants only applies to African-American individuals. I wore old Navy boot cut jeans for 10 long years. Those are baggy. They make you look like you not only are fat, but don't know how to dress. Yeah. And so I wore plenty of baggy pants when I lived in my homeland in the mountains of Caucasus. But, however, but however, it seems like she has some very conservative cultural perspectives about how people should be dressing themselves and spending their free time in their own small businesses that they're supporting. So um, I think it's weird for anyone, even on the sly, to openly tell someone, hey, don't book hip hop gigs until COVID's yeah. over. So we are gonna, we're going to continue looking into this. I'm going to give Marlene the benefit of the doubt because I don't want to get canceled before anything even gets started. That's right. And because I don't know her. But if she's on the record, you know, for the last seven years, supporting some of these kind of things that are kind of a drag. And it's also these are African-American hip hop performers. I was friends with on Facebook that were sharing this information. So that's where I'm hearing that stuff. And, you know, and we got to make sure that we have equal voices, brother. Some of my favorite shows have been completely random in the diversity of the lineup of artists. And we just, you know, and I've had I've had booking agents at other clubs tell me. Yeah, can we not book a hip hop act as the opener? Like I was trying to book it was these two guys I really? worked with. Oh yeah, I was trying to I was these two guys I worked with and I wanted to book a show with the both of them with us. I think it was you and I and and Adam. And uh it was I mean, that So you're like a victim of racism. Well, and so the booking agent said, Yeah, can we not do the hip hop act between you guys? It was gonna be um us and then the hip hop act and then the headlining band from that night. So that's so messed up. Those guys, you know what's so funny? Too? And I was Is booking there... that whole show myself. I was the only one spending any money at the fucking bar because it ended up being game right. six of the World Series. <laughs> but it's like, it's so funny because it's the same guys that are running that club that like grew up and they'll talk about their past. Like, no, we were fucking crazy, man. We were like, but you know, we, I mean, fuck the fuck the man you know and it's like the same guys are like mm, i don't think so now the the shorts you can look a little nicer to our punk rock venue yeah yeah i don't know i don't know so dumb i don't know so th- that's so that's on my shit list we got to talk about condiments All right i'm a heavy sauce guy you know that i like my food wet mm-hmm. and lower calories of stuff don't bother me. You know what I mean? Lower calorie versions of stuff don't bother me. Right? Um, even if it's a higher carcinogenic option. Um, um, I'd yeah. rather have sauce 
the no sauce. But either way you go, condiments are stupid potent right now. Like, over the last 20 years. Give someone a nice, subtle, from scratch ketchup, and they tell you to go fuck yourself. If you give them, like, a nice homemade curry ketchup, they get <laughs> yeah. grossed out. I like homemade ketchup, yeah. but the market, the mass is like a potent sauce. If you give them a lower calorie, higher carcin- carcinogenic option, like a like a Hidden Valley Zero or some shit, even better. Uh, but I refuse to believe that that shit is a net improvement upon from scratch ranch with the sour cream or the heavy extra extra heavy mayonnaise you know like when you work in a restaurant and they have the big plastic yeah. tub of disgusting thick delicious mayonnaise that's what they make ranch out of in a lot of those places yeah i just i i am not i'm not gonna here i was thinking about it because i used to do my fitness pal you remember that app i used to put all my food in even if it was that. even if it was fucking taco bell you um, spend the whole day out you spend the whole restaurant time doing it we wouldn't even be able to visit. I was insulted. Yeah. When I was 14. Yeah. I was like, you're just on your phone the whole time. I'm just. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot of food I had to put in there for the accountability, but I never put in condiments. I refused to acknowledge because I tried once and like one cup of the buttermilk ranch sauce, they call it now from Jack in the box is like 160 calories by itself and so you do one of those per fucking taco you're done it's so dumb and i don't think people are thinking about it i don't think people are thinking about how much sugar is in normal ketchup if you load up on four fat tablespoons of full flavor ketchup i mean that's like slamming a bottle of mountain dew liquid liquid sugars are the worst I hear like they're the they're, they just turn. Where do you hear that from? I uh, my neighbor is a uh, scientist, actually from Monsanto. Used to be for the late Monsanto, now Bayer. Recently retired for um, undisclosed reasons. The guy? It's a lady. <laughs> you jerk. Jesus, they let ladies work at Monsanto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were in a rough place. Oh, God. Yeah, but I, uh, you know, you know what else she said is, so these, these new uh, Beyond Beef products, they are. Don't start. Actually gonna, well, they're going to be more unhealthy because the, uh, the Beyond Beef burger, the Impossible Burger from Burger King, in order to compromise for the, all that lost flavor, of real meat they have to they have to replace all of the uh they have to replace it all with sodium because that's what gives it you know a a, a flavor if you've ever had like an actual good healthy beyond beef burger it doesn't taste like anything it tastes like it tastes like grass and so they have to make up for it with with sugar and sodium and it's it's actually way more unhealthy for you than um than regular meat well i had a beyond whopper when they first came out it was nine dollars for the fucking combo like i was like wow. at a hilton and then uh you got whopped. and they didn't even park my car for me and <laughs> then you got it it tasted like a uh Jumbo Jack. That's it. That's I couldn't think of it. I could not think of Jack's fucking name to save my life. Jumbo Jack. It's yeah. Is it tasted Jack in the Box. Just just like a Jumbo Jack. So whatever they took out of the Whopper to turn it into the Impossible Whopper made it taste just like a Jumbo Jack. So a Jumbo Jack plus X equals Whopper. So we just have to solve for X. Ah. Uh. And I don't know what X is. Yeah, it's uh, probably a probably the sauce. But you're saying it's a sugar salt grass combo, yeah. Compound. Did you watch the inauguration? I missed it. Yeah, it was weird to think that everyone was sitting around watching TV in the middle of the day. But I had it on in the background. I had CNN dot live in the background at work. 
Michelle's a queen. That purple was too good. As soon as Mama Kamala puts us all in jail, Michelle's going to be queen. It's going to be luscious. My gosh, that's a lot. Uh, I heard of my favorite podcast this week about this guy, uh, Steve Bing. Did you listen to this yet? Yeah, I heard about it. Okay, good. Uh, we, listened we, we listened to the same thing. And who yeah. he, apparently he was a Hollywood guy. He was apparently friends with Bill Clinton, and then he jumped to his death from the 27th floor <laughs> of a high-rise of luxury apartments. He also, the reason I worked, wrote this down is because he wrote Kangaroo Fucking Jack. Yeah. Did you ever see Kangaroo <laughs> Jack? Yeah, the classic. It has that guy from Sliders in it. That I don't know if it's show. a classic. Yeah, that guy wanted so bad to be famous, the, yeah. the lead in that movie, but that was a failure. So he probably should have been thrown off the balcony for that. Jerry O'Connell. The, who? Jerry O'Connell's the guy. He has like a perfect face, but in a creepy way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he looks like a fucking carny. He looks like a. Yeah. He reminds me of this dickhole I was to school with named <laughs> David something that was. Uh, it's like so smarmy, and then years later, I met like I met this <laughs> like drunk guy at a bar who started talking to me and my buddy, uh, R.I.P. And uh, he started showing us pictures of his his daughter's like shit bird boyfriend, and it was this <laughs> fucking kid, David. I'm not gonna say his last name. It was this fucking, and then you know why I hated him is because he used to call me a dick shark. <laughs> Wait, okay. I was brand new in third grade. I seriously did not write any of this down. I can't believe that you just did this to me. So he used to call me a dick shark. And what they would do is they would all run around the jungle gym and scream dick shark and point and try to stay away from me. Oh even God. though I didn't consent to any game playing. I didn't I didn't consent to a game of consent. I said, guys, why are you calling me that? They said, This is the game we play. If you're it you're the dick shark. And whenever we see you, we have to scream dick shark so everyone else knows where the dick shark is. <laughs> and then they would run. Over, but I didn't agree to be it. But they th decided I was playing and I got to be it. And this cocksucker David. <laughs> uh, so uh, he would start it off with that. And then one time he cold cocked me in the side of the head for some reason. Like he was, we were beefing about something, I guess. And we he were like, back to you with his dick. No, 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 no. Cold oh. cocking just means he punched me in the side of the head when I didn't know it. And I fell all the way down and I was so shocked. I couldn't even really get mad. I, I mean, oh, gosh. I was really dazed. <laughs> then years later, I meet this blackout drunk, older guy at a bar. Who, Look at this piece of shit. Who says my daughter's dating this piece of shit. And it was totally this kid, David, who he was like oh, was always man. was always kind of a wannabe. He was an attractive kind of like, uh, but in a creepy way. No, he was like a handsome young guy, but he yeah his like his inner spirit was creepy. Like you didn't trust him, but he always kind of looked happy. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm like, what is he doing? It's like he it's right. he always kind of had a smile on his face, like he just like shit his pants and he's waiting for everyone <laughs> to smell it. But you always yeah. felt like it wasn't that he shit his pants. You always felt like that he was going to, like, brutally rape the shit out of you in your sleep. <laughs> right, right. And right. and so then, just now, we're talking about this piece of shit movie, Kangaroo Jack. And yeah. Jerry O'Connell O'Connell looks just like this cocksucker David that punched me in the side <laughs> of the head and called me a dick shark. And you know what? I'm glad his dad didn't own that piece of shit condo he always lived in. Oh! <laughs> That was good. Um, so, but you know what's so funny is my dad had this bout of mania. I think at one point where right. we were probably a little too old to have a fun morning at the movies with dad the way he was playing it, but he was so excited about it that it, he was being really cool. So we had a really good time, and we went to go see Kangaroo Fucking Jack like opening weekend, and right. we had TGI Fridays or some shit for lunch. Or we each had like nine buckets of popcorn because this is when you would get the free refills. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Dude, us, those three fucking cave trolls walking in there with our Tasmanian devil <laughs> muscle shirts, probably. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah I'll take there three big pieces of shit to see Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> Hi, welcome to uh, Japan Cinema. How can we help you? Hi, <laughs> we are three cave trolls here to see Kangaroo Jack and just bring in the corn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you just see? Counter for that you remember <laughs> Fellowship of the Ring? I remember yeah. when the cave troll comes in, when they're yeah, in the I, mine kingdom that, with all yeah, the dead bodies. Yeah. Okay. So that's what me and my dad and my brother, we each looked like one of those sauntering up 
to the De Pere Cine, getting out of my dad's pickup truck with camouflage on the side of it. A big, big <laughs> right. white truck with a camouflage detail decal across the bottom. Decal. And we're all wearing, like, Cancun t-shirts. Right. Having never been to Cancun. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the point. And we're walking up like this. Hi, we heard about this movie called Kangaroo Jack. Me and my large sons would like to fight over popcorn and snarl in the back of a theater full of children for three hours while we watch the cinematic masterpiece kangaroo jack smoking is there a smoking section no he never smoked i saw him smoking a cigar one time at a washer tournament but i think he was just blackout drunk he was not a big smoker he's not a big never was a big smoker has never been um so i thought it was so weird so you know how the universe does that where it brings details from my past back into my life yeah what are the odds that my favorite podcast is going to have an episode named after the guy that wrote one of the only movies i ever saw with my dad in the theater my dad does not go to movie theaters very often wow ever in his life because you know why he falls asleep he gets too relaxed and he falls right asleep. i do it too now it's crazy we oh i was trying to have a romantic date with my wife uh like a, this, <laughs> this is pre-covid yeah. so we may not have even been married yet but it was that maybe year we got married so two years ago and uh there was this new movie out i read about in the rft or some shit uh it was this korean movie maybe but it had like the longest ever continuous shot or something and it like and it had this part where you, you know, went so you, you saw a Korean movie with your wife pre COVID, but it had these great subtitles. It was a really romantic story. Parasite? No, 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 no. It was before that. That's why I knew it wasn't that. Uh, uh, I want to say it was Chinese. The movie was. We saw it at the Tivoli. It was all in subtitles. But then the whole reason I went to see the movie was this one shot near the end, and I fall asleep like right as it's starting. That's hilarious. We were, I was full of sushi. It was warm in there, but there's only one other guy in the theater and he was so mad at us. We were in the big main central theater there. And why is he mad at you? (laughs) I guess he wanted to be the only guy in there. I guess he was going to get completely naked and yell. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy Dan in there. Oh, well, he's going to have to put his clothes back on. Hey, somebody go tell crazy Dan. We got some pudgy white couple showed up. (laughs) They're not even going to get popcorn because they're still eating sushi in the line. (laughs) <laughs> tell me only has to keep his clothes on for about 20 minutes <laughs> oh, i'm just not inspired to talk about the inauguration i watched it um i'm excited uh to to get back to normal and maybe do some good stuff as yeah. a fucking country i'm just hoping that happens we need to talk about energy not as a country but as as a as a people over here like the the politicians are always talking about energy amongst themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I started driving, gas was three sixty five a gallon, which uh-huh. is high, it's right? High. Yeah. Bush would have still been in the White House. Yeah. Okay. So my senior Born year in high school. Plummeted. Sorry, I'm sorry. My senior year of high school. 2008 going into 2009 it plummeted to 230 which was so low because it was going it was hovering it was it was almost four so many times it got up to in the 380s here it was crazy high all the time it was just ridiculous and then it plummeted to like 230 and it's it's gone up and down right now it's hovering around like two but it's never gone up above three like it did back in the day and a big part of that um was you know uh the economy and people investing in those what we call oil futures but elderly uh right wingers on facebook are gonna are gonna scream at you that a uh, four dollar gas is coming back but obama and biden were in office when it when it dropped so i don't understand exactly how that correlates directly uh, and I took a class in college that included a text about what we call peak oil, which was all about how our relationship with oil, our dependence on oil, was not sustainable because there was going to be a point where the amount of oil we had access to was going to start steadily declining in a way that was not um, consistent with our current model of consumption. Uh, we, we started drilling. That was the other big thing. 
also yeah we opened we opened uh yeah lo- um not local but um inland you, you know yeah. domestic is the word domestic oil domestic. production yeah and uh, it was a really well written book that that we read in that class, but I think I initially misread it at the time as, "Oh, we're already out of oil, and we need to start acting like it," which is not at necessarily true. Yeah, you know what I mean. The economy may be reliant on oil futures, but it's uh, it's not like oil's running out. But we're always having to have a conversation about future use, so that's kind of the the room for error. And uh, But it felt like to me that we were already out of oil, and I felt like it meant that we had to abandon oil, so of course we'd be fighting for that. But really what it meant is that we had a scientific basis to regulate our manufacturing and production of oil to reduce waste and sustain that future use, and that's why you know it's such a big part of the conversation. Now, a big part of why we have such inexpensive oil right now is that a lot of those regulations on how much oil different countries can pump have either been lifted or abandoned, right? We lifted our own regulations so that we could manufacture more domestic oil. We also have those huge coal deposits in Utah and places like that uh, for you know other fossil fuels that um, we have a lot of, even though we technically are supposed to be avoiding them. Russia, for example, has opened the taps, as they say, because other worldly powers have not enforced regulations on production in places like, for example, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. You can look that shit up. It's totally real. Part of why oil is so cheap recently, it's staying so cheap, is because other places have not upheld these international, upheld these international agreements to limit their oil production. And when you limit your oil production, you're doing that uh, in – tandem with other countries so that you don't create um yeah, so you, emissions you don't caps well there's the emissions caps the environmental aspect there's also the economic aspect is that you don't want to be undercutting anyone else's uh production or you don't want anyone undercutting yours either so you have to both agree to slow at similar rates at the same time but russia has noticed that people are not enforcing those rules on certain other countries and so they're totally just cranking out. They're like, fuck it. We'll make all the goddamn oil we feel like making. And it's kind of been similar cases in a lot of in a lot of places. So I made uh, the connection strictly because I keep seeing a lot of rhetoric on social media about how um, that big stack of executive orders, you know, Biden signed yesterday is going to include regulations that will totally fuck up gas prices because for example it canceled that one pipeline however that pipeline was not done being built so and it certainly wasn't done being built 12 fucking years ago when gas dropped to similar prices to where it is now so i don't really get that correlation that's something i wanted you to look into what are you looking at looking at what happens after we cancel the pipeline oh did you just type that in to ask jeeves yeah, I, it was Bing, but you did not it, just you did not just bang it. I bang it. You ba- you um, just bung it. I bonged it. Oh and fuck, he bung it. Revoking its permit, so and includes. I mean, so. So what? As a result, expected. Okay, as a result of expected revoca- uh, revocation of the presidential permit, advan- uh, advancement of the project will be suspended. Okay, so they're just going to stop. And I guess, I mean, I mean they're not going to tear it so down. Crazy, yeah. That's so like they'll just like you know, wait. It's like they're it's doing like, that design. with the wall. They're shutting down all production on all the wall so that they can move those yeah. financial resources to uh, the vaccine. That's what I heard today. That's so funny. It's just funny when like, and I'm sure there's an actual business like or a political technical term for it. But it's like it's like you didn't get in the Olympics. It's like we got to wait another four years. It's just. Like wait for another Republican to get an office, we can finish this thing. That's so funny. Like, that's that is funny. If that was their idea, was it? Well, shit. Everyone go home for four years. Yeah, we'll try again. Yeah, that's so hilarious. Whoo, girl, we're making really good time. How long we've been on? Great. Okay, let's move on to some of my 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 personal reflections for the week. (laughs) I'm okay. 
Are you okay? Yeah. You're doing okay? Yeah. Great. 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 So I made a breakthrough on my own self-reflection about this political binary that we live in, like we were just talking about. I used to, and on certain issues, probably would still say that there are some issues where we need to sacrifice something because it's so important. And, you know, for me, it used to be same-sex marriage or, you know, uh, it didn't make sense to me why that was illegal. It seems so cruel and unnecessary. And I used to say, you know, maybe the evangelicals just need to accept that we live in a house, uh, in a, I'm sorry, in a democracy. And, you know... Um, We're not asking them to participate in something just because we want other people to have the same privileges that they have, right? Right. But. I'm here. No, I know. I'm just, you know, I'm thinking about how I want to say this. Be careful. We, I just think we need some, I mean, I don't, I, it's hard when you have versions of freedom that are like mutually exclusive. Like it's not. Right good enough to have your own freedom to practice and live your faith in whatever way you want to, but you, you have to enact government to limit other people's freedoms so that your doctrine is intact or something. Right. And, you know, I mean, I definitely think we need to fix healthcare and maybe that's going to cost some dollars from somewhere else that really feels like they need it. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's like the end of Game of Thrones that was so garbage. But the overall sentiment that was the disagreement, you know, so right. I can not spoil anything, it's basically that who gets to choose what is more important than other than everybody else? Who gets to choose who the good guys are? Right. And I mean it's it's complicated because I can't believe are... I cannot believe you're off camera right now. I know. I'm getting I'm getting I'm I'll be right back. Just one second. What what could you possibly be doing? <laughs> And you got that ugly fucking dream catcher haunting my live stream right now. Yeah. I'm, Why know, don't you take your MacBook bad. to the bathroom and you can show my you audience know, I, how you take a dude, shit? Come on. I know. Stop. I'm trying to let me focus. You better be making a hot pocket. <laughs> you're and you're gonna crinkle Cheetos? <laughs> no, you're crinkling Cheetos in no, the microphone. No, I'm not. Are you, you're time. not making me a right birthday back. cake. I know you're not, not making. <laughs> hey, I, you know, I thought, you know, did you have a good birthday? Talk about your birthday, by the way. I, I had a lovely birthday. birthday. I had a lovely birthday, and I pre and you and your lovely uh, female companion sent me lovely text messages, and I appreciate you both so much. Wait, she sent you something? Oh, yeah, she sent me a lovely text message about how cool I am. Really? Oh, yeah, she sent me some, she sent me some pics. It was great. You shut up. It was a joke. Right that now. part that part was a joke. <laughs> it's a boundary. So, but here's the thing. So like I was saying, so it's it's a hard argument to have that, you know, we're trying to build a better society, but people are going to disagree about what better means cuz something that I think is really really good. I knew you couldn't wait to have noodles, you fucking I'm, cocksucker. I, I'm not, it's not it's a, it's not. You even put them in a noodle bowl. Is that a chicken strip? <laughs> no. Egg roll. Oh, God, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. So who gets to decide who the good guys are? But the thing is, like, it seems so natural that the issues that some of the issues we feel really passionate about, for me, it's been healthcare for a long time. It feels like I'm talking about a, a thing that everybody wants that seems humane to give everybody and something like we could afford with the right gradual plan. Right. Um. And people get so angry. People that don't even really pay taxes get so angry. Poor people get angry at the idea of other poor people having health care provided by the same government by which they are governed. It just amazes me that they can just do it. They can get they, their defense. The foundation of their defense is that people are lazy, which frustrates me. Because it's like, I'm not going to pay for that. You know, it's like, uh, and a big part of the argument, to be fair, is, hey, no one's paying for my health insurance. I work 50 hours a week and I'm contributing to my health insurance. And if I didn't have this job, I wouldn't have health insurance. And my response intellectually to that always is, don't you want better for your kids than what you had? Don't right. you, you don't exactly. want, don't you want 
These are people with their own children who are not making as much money as them, right? Yeah. I know a guy who is so anti-socialized medicine, as he calls it, and he does pay taxes. He makes enough money, I'm sure. He actually pays taxes. So, I mean, yeah. I guess it is his money he's talking about there. But his own children would have healthier, more fulfilling lives if they didn't have to worry about their health insurance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, yeah. as they grow into adults, what if what if they don't want to work 75 hours a week and be in a super competitive, expensive environment? Are you saying that your own children don't deserve health care? Because they, they can't get on yours after they're 26. Eventually, they're going to age out. I'm 30. I had to have my own health insurance. You know what I'm saying? Make, so, like, but make, he's, uh, do you think he's just thinking about the lazy brown people that he's afraid of with his tax dollars? Does he not know that those are going to be his own children, too? Yeah. I mean, they're what they're making. They're making suffering a rite of passage. And, like, oh, and Joe, that's good. Know, it's like a su subjective version of the word, but it's like, it's the same. I work with these people. They're they're like somebody is like I just you know somebody's I don't want I can't work you know these days because I really the school she's like well I did dental school blah, blah, blah. and I'm like that I don't care about what you yeah do. I'm not That's saying not I'm not saying that um, nobody can do what I'm trying to do. I'm just saying that it's really hard. I'm not saying that hey yeah. this is I did you tell her hey my engineering program is harder than anything you've ever done did you say that to her I, no I can't no I don't say stuff like that <laughs> right I, but I, the, is, but yeah. isn't that how she's reacting right she's yeah. acting like you said that because I complained about something yeah. people get so mad and they project their own bullshit onto other people it gets crazy I have so many examples of that I could tell you yeah. but the real battle right now needs to be against that binary yeah. Right. You are not my enemy. Like, I think the proverbial you, you are not my enemy because you are pro-life and I'm pro-choice. I don't even really want to argue with women about this issue because I really don't feel like it's my place to tell any woman either way. Maybe this is an issue where I've said this before. Maybe only the females in in Congress should vote on this one. <laughs> if it comes up again, you that's know what I mean? Interesting. Like that's it, that's really how hands off I want to be on that specific issue. That's just me. But that's one of these issues that are very polarizing. Those you got to bring me some of those noodles now. Okay. And uh, these issues are so polarizing. I would have advice for any female friend or colleague or family member that asked me about one of these issues. Like if a, if a, if anyone I know came to me and they had this uh, unexpected pregnancy crisis going on in their life. Uh, you know, I would never um, assume to be able to tell them what to do. I would never decree that people have yeah. to make one decision or the other. I would have advice right. for them depending on their situation. And I'm never going to be quick to one answer or the other. And ultimately, I, I have never participated in that process. So it's not something that I feel like is any of my business. However, I do understand the people that really – um live and die by that specific issue they really feel like people are murdering babies for their organs people really believe that and it influences how they vote whether or not we agree with that is not the point of the show and i've already said I, this is not a debate i don't have specifically but i totally understand the passion and the, the commitment to the issue yeah. if that is yeah. where your belief structure leads you but here's the thing uh it's not a cornerstone of our economy to the point where it should oh. be playing this role in how we interact with people and where we choose to live or not live based off yeah. that one issue. They want us one. to fight about inexpensive issues like abortion and gay marriage so that they can keep yeah. the status quo. When I say they, I mean the establishment, which is the bipartisan career government, right? These people that have... Uh, like the new president who have been in the system for decades, maintaining the status quo and just leaning, leaning the leaning the bobsled certain ways on certain issues to appease the masses. Right. It's yeah, bigger. It's, a it's big bigger. Virtue signal. It's a big it's a big difference between Democrats and Republicans and the the insiders and the outsiders. All the old people that are at the top of everything and in charge of all the shit. Again, I, I, you know, I said last week they've all been poisoned by lead for their whole lives. You never really get over that shit. That shit stays with you. It lives in your spine and shit. And 
uh, and they're workaholics, and that causes mm-hmm. dementia. And you, you know, if you don't get enough sleep because you work too much, you will go fucking crazy. The older you get. So if you're pro-life, I know it's coming from a place where you really feel like you're fighting for a just cause. And I'm certainly also not going to tell you that you're not, right? That's totally, I totally get it. But that doesn't mean that we don't agree on more things that we probably uh, disagree, right? I think we, would, I think most of those people that I'm thinking about, me and them would agree on 51% of all other things. If we took every detail of our life in our society and our universe and lined it up one by one, me and that person would probably agree on the overall positivity of 51% or greater of those things. I feel safe making that bet. It's an impossible exercise to recreate, so I'm confident. Yeah. I think the hope is that, especially, I think this is possible with, if we flood the government with Democrats, hopefully we'll create new parties. Because I think, you know, we could have these... Well, especially with, the, Jewish... with like these, with like the really square neoliberal... Mm-hmm like establishment Democrats like that are in power right now, suddenly, I mean, it's yeah. not sudden. It's not so sudden. It's just, it's very, like we talk about with Saturday Night Live. It's very like educated, mild leftism. It's not progressive. Yeah. It's not challenging the status quo. Um, we are making yeah. some historical milestones, but I think we'd also agree that we probably should have had a woman of color um, working in the white house a lot longer before 2021. Right. Um, So there were women. So I do agree. I do. I do agree that having the first uh, woman of color vice president is such a great accomplishment. I really like her in that role. And I really love um, her, uh, her influence. I just. uh, (laughs) So in conclusion, we love Kamala Harris. I do. I do love Kamala. I didn't like her as the idea of her in the primary. I didn't want her to be president president. I really like her as vice president. And I would totally be okay if 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 she has to move up a seat somewhere in the middle of the term. I'm totally okay with that, too. There has to be some sort of glass ceiling. As long as there's a glass ceiling, I'm good. What does that mean? (laughs) I'm just kidding. Oh, it was a joke. I was like, I I hope he knows what that means. (laughs) <laughs> but the real enemy here, Joe, is the small group of people that are hoarding all the resources and power, and they're trying to turn us all against each other while they commit the real crimes. That's really what's going on here. And I'm not saying Kamala Harris is committing those crimes. That's not what I'm saying. I'm also not excluding it as a possibility. Well, that's what I was saying. So I, I <laughs> hope we, we can, instead of having the Republicans, pro-lifers, anti-gay, everything, Democrats, the image of the left we should have like the most diverse i mean there should be just like gender there should be you know a lot of different you know uh political stances and you and so you should be able to identify uh as democrat but also say okay but when you put me in the virtue part of the government which should be its own part of the government like you shouldn't be voting on the virtue stuff with the same on the same bill you're voting on you know, on the same. Well, and that's the other problem is the, yeah, the convoluting of it takes, there's such a bottleneck that they have to, you know, bundle legislation with other things. My thing is in our daily lives, we are supporting real people every day, right? Unless you're some kind of monster, I bet you do something in support or in consideration of someone, you know, every day. And and I'm using the proverbial you here. I'm talking right to my audience. Where's my camera? Give me a camera. I can't read that and, and, and look at the camera. Now, you check on somebody or or you literally care for another person, maybe a child or an elderly relative or a student or something. But real people are not just sitting around counting their money all day, figuring out their plan for the universe. We are really fighting to keep things together to try to uphold our ideal of what we want our life to be. And we all do our part in that. We may be doing a better job than others. You may be doing a better job than me. I'm probably doing a better job than a lot of people. My mom is a nurse. She's literally nursing people through one of the most vulnerable points in their life. And she happens to work with disabled veterans. So that's, it's easy for me to say, I don't have quite that hands-on experience of, of participating in a supportive and positive way like that. But 
I happen to work at a school with some kids that really, really need the school and the people that they get to work with every day. We are not the problem. Normal people like us that are participating are not the problem. And if you're fixing cars, or if you're unemployed and just taking care of your home and your family, you are doing more for humanity where you have access than uh, when compared to your level of resources than any of these people you see in the news every day. So I need you to give yourself some credit, Joe. You're doing a great job. And, you know, if you have a child or a rescue pet or even just a friend that really needs you, you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're an angel. Right? Would somebody miss out on something if your, like, daily routine just stopped? Think about that. Think about would would somebody get upset if you failed to do something for them because you just decided to stop doing all those things one day? I think people that can say yes to that are most of us, number one. And you're either providing that support or you're receiving that support. So you may fall in that category also. Most normal people can say that, right? Most normal people have that experience of contributing, right? Especially when held next to a college dropout with trillions of dollars to blow on satellites and research for TED Talks. Fuck those people. And, like, for example, I have an iPhone, and I'd buy a Tesla if my wife would let me, but that's because I'm addicted to the hype. It's not a strength of mine. It's not something I'm proud of. Give yourself some credit. You're either supporting others or you are in need of that support. And if you don't, if you can't think of anyone you're supporting, you're probably receiving some support, and that's your privilege, right? I'm glad you have that person. If you're person. receiving support, you're doing the right thing. Thanks, Joe. Right? Like, if you need help, you should ask our, for it. Our supposed role models today are, are living so far above the struggle. that They're not even living in the same plane of existence that we are. Really. Yeah, like you to me. Totally. And I imagine. If you're listening to this, you're probably in that struggle, right? You're probably in that struggle where you actually have to worry about money. You actually have to worry about knocking things off of your to-do list to make sure that you can continue maintaining even whatever meager lifestyle you may be able to hobble together right now in these unprecedented times. And we're letting these people that don't live in that struggle decide all the things that we're supposed to fight about. Matt, I can say that confidently because I know Matt Damon and Oprah are not in our analytics. They're not listening, so don't worry. And you may be thinking... Well, how does he know? Maybe I'm a piece of shit, and I can bet you're totally good. You are either supporting somebody or you are being supported. Tweet me. I can describe it to you. You can you can Instagram us at Jacob V Weekly and say, hey, look at me. Am I a piece of shit? And we will explain to you why you are not. I'm going to ask you some questions about your lifestyle, your experience. I'm going to point to you the value in your life that makes you so much more important than the uh, – billionaire monsters that we kind of have to consume every day online or for another angle you can tweet me and i'll tell you why you're a piece of shit i would also like to do that if you really need me to tell you why you're a piece of shit i can point that out i can point out that somebody's loving you but that you're also garbage and i want you to think about this with other people i want you to be thinking that like maybe i'm a piece of shit and i'm going to explain to you why you're not and i want you to try to acknowledge that in your life for yourself Acknowledge the things in your life that are valuable in that way. Acknowledge the things that in your life that are good, that are important, even if they're simple. And then try to identify that in other people, even if just for yourself. I'm not saying you need to tell people why they matter, although it could be nice. But try to think about that person's experience. Is that lady at work completely defined by how annoying she is at lunch? Probably not. She probably has a family and she could... Be really good at her job that doesn't excuse or heal how fucking obnoxious she is at lunch. But she's a human with value, probably, depending on where you work. You should have expanded on that and kind of outed somebody you work with. (laughs) 
And f- I'm that the lady at lunch, I have a very clear idea of a, a lunch <laughs> a lunch situation I used to be in where I actually have a couple people on that list. I know who those bitches are. But those bitches had families. And they were working really hard to take care of their families and they were you know, teaching and then on their lunch breaks, calling and screaming at their husbands and their kids, trying to trying to make a better life for their children. And I can respect that. And it really helped me put up with how they would fucking eat so loudly and talk about having sex with their bald husband all through my lunch break. And it wouldn't upset me as much when I when I had to think that that's a real family. Those are real people. They're really trying to do it. It's a real family. They gross me out. <laughs> They gross me out. <laughs> they gross me out. You they know, there's li- something endearing about it. You know, there's something endearing about it's not about no. That. This fucking family drank five <laughs> gallons of milk a week. Oh my gosh, it was awful. Um, but I want you to find that in people that you really hate. Find the value that person has in people that really make you crazy because it's hard. But picture a single person that really irks your spirit. Someone who fucks you up in the head. Go ahead and close your eyes. Think about a person that really irks your spirit. Somebody that really gets on your nerves that you kind of have to see on a regular basis. I'm picturing a guy, coincidentally. They don't want us to do this. They don't want us to melt this binary and unify as real people. But... It's for you. It's for your mental health. So I want you to picture your dude. Picture your person. I'm picturing a guy. We'll call him Donald. Just pick a name. Any name is fine. Just picture a guy. My guy's name is Donald. Donald is really challenging for me. He represents a lot of things I don't like. He behaves in a way that really, really gets under my skin. And uh, I hate how he talks, but like in every imaginable interpretation, I hate his accent and I hate the actual words he uses. And the meaning behind them, all three. It's a trifecta of hateable speech. But my guy also looks like a person I would hate. Donald, and again, I'm making a guy up here for this exercise. He's just not me or my culture at all. He shaves every day, strike one. He fake tans. I've never tanned. I don't get it. He wears a suit like every fucking day. If I have to tuck something in, I'm a hostage. I hate it. So Donald, my hypothetical incarnation of hateable things, I have to look at him and try to humanize him. I have to try to discover what value he could possibly have. If I don't, I'll lose sleep over it. I'll obsess over how pure evil it feels like he is, hypothetically, of course. And maybe he has employees. Maybe some of them really like their work that they do for him. Maybe his family has uh, privileges because of his power. Right. His kids seem to be really successful. Not a ton of rehab. Even the secret fat daughter got a law degree, hypothetically. And I and Tiffany, hypothetically. She is. I mean, she's the pudgy. She's pudgier than her sisters. Hypothetically. And I start to calm my hate when I do that. I start to calm down. The things I hate don't go away. Not even for a second. But I'm slowing down. I don't need to rush to shout them down. I don't need to let them occupy that energy in my life. I can dedicate that energy to my happiness. My examples of joy. Like this guy here. My examples of joy throughout my life is where I can start to put that energy. I can dedicate that energy to my happiness and to the things that really matter. And the reason... I think we should all do that is because I think we need to enter a time of healing. Right, Hans? I have a question. Right, Hans? I think we need to enter a time of healing where, hold on, where we reflect on all this hate that we've been exposed to recently. And I want us to try to think about the good that could persist out of that hate. And I want us to try to use that to calm ourselves down. We need to go back to sleep. Joseph, you had a question. So how do you, when you're, when you're in a position where you have to forgive someone, how do you go about forget? And they've done something really annoying to, you know, to you, they've hurt you or whatever. And you uh, know you have to forgive them because on top of all that, you love them. Do you, I was talking, 
I was talking about forgiveness with uh, in a rela- in somebody I'm in a relationship with actually my she's my girlfriend and I was like you know when I forgive I try to sit and be very intentional about forgiving and then I just let it kind of like flush in the toilet I'm just like you know what I was frustrated about that I'm going to give it its time and now I'm going to leave it leave it and anytime it comes up again in my brain I say I'm going to leave that but also, that could be toxic. Well, I just, I don't think you're addressing the full problem. I don't think you need to heal away from stuff. I think you need to heal through stuff. So my thing is, and me and my wife were just having this conversation. We were reading some horoscope uh, garbage. And I'm a Capricorn and she's the a Bible? Lead... No, no, no. Horoscope. Oh. And uh, we were talking about, uh, you know, I'm a Capricorn and she's a Libra. We were talking about compatibility and she feels emotions very passionately, but her instinct is to shield them because they're hers, right? They're private. And my instinct is to accept and try to understand all emotions so that I don't lose sleep over why did that happen, right? So for me, it wouldn't be enough to say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to worry about that piece of shit David calling me a dick shark and punching me in the side of the head. I'm not going to worry about it because that's not enough. I would eventually have to say, wait a minute. Hey, that guy has no right to punch me in the side of the head just because he's not happy because he's an only child and his parents are divorced and his dad's a piece of shit and can't even afford his own house. Just because of all that does not mean he can punch me in the side of the head because I didn't punch him in the side of the head. So the punishment didn't match the crime. Maybe I am a dick shark. But that doesn't mean you can just punch me in the side of the head. So what I think about that is I have to think about, okay, but why why does it not matter? Why why what ammunition do I have to where I can forgive that wrongdoing without having to get revenge? You want to forgive without necessarily getting anything, right? And so for that, I resort recently to gratitude and I do like a uh, a cost benefit analysis right so first off I like to start by being thankful for everything I do have right David punching me in the side of the head in third grade it doesn't threaten my lovely home or my lovely pets or my lovely wife or my lovely Ford escape right it doesn't threaten any of those things and I'd bet money that I have more success and sustained joy in my daily life than he does if he is still that person that called me a dick shark and punched me in the side of the head. But but what if but what like but you don't want to compete with him because what if he does? What if what if he does? Well, what if you can tell he's very fulfilling? He has a very fulfilling life. I just doubt it because I understand the deep void that existed in that boy's soul, and he didn't have like unless he's been in therapy for the last ten years like I have. And he happens to also have all the same things that I do. Uh, But then I'd be happy for him. And then I'd sneak into his perfect life and I'd punch him in the side of the fucking head. Punch him in the face. And when he wakes up, written in human shit on the mantle, (laughs) dick shark. (laughs) Dick shark. (laughs) Um. Yeah, and I mean, I guess I was kind of speaking after the fact that we, you know, there's always a conversation and there's an attempt to, oh, is this the conclusion? I'm listening. I'm listening. Well, now it's just buzzy. Um, I was just saying that this is all kind of, I mean, there is, you know, obviously you have to address a problem. And if there is kind of, at least if it can take a step down from where it was, you can then, you know, you can then move forward and say and apologize to each other and then move forward. But even after the fact, sometimes it'll come back up and in your thoughts, you'll say, man, and, but that's the problem is if you actually forgave them, you have to let, in that moment, you have to let it go because you've already done all that action. You know, you've already had the discussion, the misunderstanding. I think that's part of it too, though, is I think forgiveness is recurring like i have to practice forgiveness every time i choose to continue relationships with certain people that require me forgiving them right and we've talked about some of those before and 
So it's not like I can just forgive them once and then just assume I'm going to be over it every time it comes up because, oh, no, I already forgave them. Forgiveness is an ongoing thing. It's like a mantra. It's something you carry into that relationship with that person. Yeah. Because some people do stuff that is so upsetting that if you didn't allow it to go away and to to wrap it in whatever wrapping you needed to wrap it. I need to wrap things in understanding in order to then release them with forgiveness. That was your yeah. fucking computer, you cocksucker. What? You just got a notification. No, I didn't. What was it? So oh, I have to didn't. I have to wrap those things in in understanding and forgiveness. Uh other people need to um you know, need to completely cut ties with those people. They can't. They can't get to that point. You know what I mean? But it is an emotional intelligence uh, skill, and yeah. it is something that's really hard. It's really hard. Even you know, it'll be hard. And and but it's yeah. you, you're choosing the value over the resentment. And so and you're you're choosing yeah. to invest in um, the the positive future, even if there's negative uh, uh, proceeding. That's our time today on Jacob B. Weekly. Joe, stay with me for a minute. We'll wrap this thing up. Guys, that's another episode of Jacob B. Weekly. High five. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Google, whatever. You can also find original music by Jacob V and Too Deep on all of your music platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, and so forth. Exclusively on Bandcamp, you can find music by my old band, Battle Stag. You can follow me on Twitter at Malachi Envy. On Instagram, now at Jacob V Weekly. We are on Instagram for clips and exclusive content. J-A-C-O-B-V-I-W-E-E-K-L-Y. I also curate a monthly playlist since May of 2020 on Spotify. Just search for Jacob V's favorite songs and you'll see them there. This month includes that aforementioned White Stripes EP. We did it, guys. Jacob V Weekly, be safe.